Hey guys, Will from EDM Tips. Today I'm going to show you how to produce house music in the style of Zhu. I'm going to work as quickly as possible and as usual you can download this project file, all the samples and presets completely free using the link below this video. And if you enjoy it, hit like, share it with your friends and consider subscribing to my channel for music production tips each and every week. Okay, without further ado, let's hop into the door and get it done. Now I'm going to create this tune in the style of his track In The Morning. So let's touch upon the vibe first. So he's always got these edgy vocals which have got lots of formant shifts, so we're gonna go into that today. We're also gonna create some acoustic sounding instruments, some slightly distorted, warm, saturated sounds, and all this is important in creating that really deep, slightly edgy vibe that he's known for. Anyway, let's dig into it. First, we're gonna set the tempo, 123. Next, we need to name this bad boy. What should we call it? Zhu, hmm, let's call it Zhu be do be do zhu be do be do okay now let's get the kick in there so i'm just going to go to my favorites uh, one of the kicks from the edm tips creative toolkit which you can check out below let's drag that in and i'm going to use a sampler today rather than programming it in in uh, audio so let's just go boom 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 on every note there we go making sure our sustain is set to full and our release is quite short so that whenever our MIDI note stops, the note stops. That's what we want. Okay, on to the next bit, the bass. We are going to create this from scratch using a wavetable. As I said, I'm going to be using almost entirely Ableton Live plugins. Uh, but you can follow along in any door. Now, why is that not loading in there? And we're going to do this. It's not going to be exactly the same as his track, but we're going to program it in in the same key. So let's just write in a bass line there. Now I know that's not the exact same notes, but it doesn't matter. And if we dig in, and we're going to quantize these because that was played quite terribly. First, let's get the clip the right length, consolidate it, then make sure we've got the correct grid size selected. So in this instance, I think it's 16th. We're going to quantize it. So that means opening up the quantize control, which I can't remember what it is. It's, yeah, my mind has escaped me. There we go. So the fact I've done it high up in the register makes it easier to hear as well. So we can get rid of these other takes. That's all right, we don't need that. Um, and then we can drop it down a couple of octaves. But let's first get the uh, shape of the ADSR amplitude correct first, because that's the first thing I always go for. So we want this quite plucky. Choose mono, because it's a bass line, we don't want the notes bleeding into each other. Okay, let's start building this sound now. So I'll just turn it down so we don't get clipping on the master channel. Then we are going to go grab those, put it down a couple of octaves. And start creating the sound. So we'll get a saw wave first. And we want this to sound plucky. So we'll take the filter down and what we're gonna do is have a second envelope here. And we're gonna apply this to this filter cutoff frequency that's gonna go meow, meow, and cut it down each time. Meow, 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 like lasers. So let's just go to the matrix, feed some in. So you can see how that's now affecting playing to this envelope shape. Add some resonance. Something goes a bit weird there. Now, if you have trouble programming in a bass line, if you use sixteenths like this, and then just experiment moving them on and off the, the actual beat, that's how you can create a nice syncopated feel to your tune. Okay, so let's drop that down another octave. That's more bass liney. Add another oscillator. Turn it on. up an octave.
Now we'll keep them in the same place. And now we're gonna add some width to this. And don't worry, I know what you're thinking. It's stereo, so do you want your bass sound um, in stereo? But we're gonna roll off the low end so it's not gonna matter. Just gonna thicken it up. Sounds really cool now. Now let's create our sub bass line. This is super important because we want this mid bass to be stereo. So we are gonna create the sub bass and keep that in mono like this. And I always do this, always recommend this to my accelerator students as well. Separate out your bass. Um, so let's just duplicate that bass line. We're actually gonna duplicate the wavetable as well, just so the ADSR shapes are the same. But we're gonna turn off the um, unison, we're gonna turn off the second oscillator, and we're just gonna stick to a nice sine wave so it's nice and clean for the sub bass. But actually for this example, I'm gonna create the, I'm, I'm gonna sustain that sub bass, which is not something I usually do, but it's gonna create a different feel for the sub bass. Uh, whoops, they are now overlapping each other, which we don't want. And I'm going to increase the sustain on the amplitude envelope. So it's much more sustained. And that's going to give some real low end energy to this track. We could try and drop that a octave. Now I'll keep it there. And we're going to put the sub octave on. And that's going to bring the real low end energy. Now let's get rid of that clicking sound. So we're going to put an EQ there, just take off the high end. So it's a lot smoother now you can hear. Let's bring it down in volume and then do the opposite for your mid bass. So you're rolling off the low end of the mid bass and you're rolling off the high end of the sub bass. So then they work together. And that's how you get lots of control over your bass. So let's group that together. Actually, let's add some groove first. We want that really housey groove to this track. So we're gonna go into the groove library. I'm gonna go and choose swing 16ths 64. That's my kind of standard go-to. And let's just drag that onto both of those bass tracks. Let's just rename this. It's yellow, the natural color of bass, that's good. Keeps things easy. And now we've dragged this onto each of these. Let's work with the groove. It's a bit hard to hear at the moment, but you'll notice it when we've got the beats in, which is our next job actually. So let's just group these together, bass. Turn it all down a bit so it's working with the kick. Okay, I'm gonna turn the groove down a little bit. There we go. And the next thing on my magic list is indeed the, uh, actually we'll do the top riff, the top riff, sorry. So let's just color this orange because it's a group. And let's create that top kind of plucky, drippy, watery sounding riff. We're gonna call this drippy riff because that's what I feel like calling it. There you go. Oh, if you notice that, that is just awesome. So I've got it mounted on the wall, but I'm really happy with how it looks. It's cool. Um, so drippy rip. Riff, man, that's a tongue twister. So I'm just gonna use the operator for this. And this is gonna be really cool. So if we just play this in with a normal sine wave. And there's another part at the end that changes. So I'm gonna program that in manually. So let's just work with what I played in. Again, quantize it because my playing's rubbish. Okay, that's close enough. And the next thing I'm gonna do is get all of the velocities the same as well, because you can see they change here. 
but the velocity is currently assigned to the volume and we want all of these notes to be hitting the same volume like this. Cool, so now let's get that kind of drippy water sound. Take the sustain right down so it's very plucky. Bit of release. And we're gonna put the same groove template on as well so it's working with the bass, not against the bass. Now let's put some reverb on there. And I'm gonna do this on the channel itself to really soften the sound. Already sounding pretty close. And what I'm gonna do is group this reverb, open up the chain rack here, create a new chain, and on this one we're gonna add an echo. And this is to get a really tight echo to make it sound like it's in a, a pipe or something like that. So we're gonna go, we'll, we'll try 100% wet. We are going to take the feedback right down, turn this to notes rather than dotted, and then just Turn off the reverb chain for a minute so we can hear what we're doing. And we want sixteenths. Ch change it to ping pong. Cool. So now it's a really tight uh, reverb, or delay rather, and then we can just feed in a bit of it underneath our reverbed signal. just adds a little bit more character that, to that sound. Okay, cool, now we're on to those drums. Now Zoo's drums are really nice, really kind of uh, warm and crispy at the same time and create a really nice groove for the track. So let's see if we can come up with something similar. So the first thing I'm gonna do is find a suitable snare sound. Now actually in the track that this is referencing, it's more of a rim shot than a snare but it does the job of where a snare or a clap would usually hit. So we'll go into samples, let's have a look what I've got. Okay, we'll just use a rim shot there, sounds pretty good. Put this on every other kick. It's a bit loud, so just turn it down there. Still a bit loud, but we'll put it on every other kick. Boom, 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 clap, 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 clap. Shot, 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 shot. And now you can see here I've got send and send B in my drum rack. This is basically assigning a reverb from the drum rack to the global reverbs I've got set up. So you can see I've got a room reverb set up here, just a really short, tight reverb. And what I've done in the drum rack, as usual if you see my other videos, is that you can open up the routing here, um, right click, create return chain, and then choose from this drop down which return chain you want to be able to send some of your separate drums to. And I always have room reverb selected. So now if we can close the routing up, we're just gonna send a little bit of this rim shot to the room reverb and keep, an, keep your eye out over here. And that's gonna be showing you what's happening with the reverb. So you can hear, very subtle but it just adds some more space to the track. Okay, I'm gonna save this. Zooby dooby doo. And then I also want you to let me know if you're enjoying it. Give me an amen brother below this video, or a hell yeah, if you're feeling a bit naughty. Let's continue. Next thing we need to do is get some shakers in there. Shake and make, baby. Let's go into the EDM Tips Creative Toolkit. Percussion. Not sure if we got many shakers here. Um, no, but some of those pretty cool sounds, could use those later. But I'm gonna pop to a different, different section and find my shakers. Okay, that is gonna do for now. And this is gonna take the place of the open hat for the time being. Go in between every kick. Let's get this, uh, well, we'll be using this velocity soon actually. So I won't get it right out of the way. Turn it down in volume. Reverb. It's all just gelling the sound together. And now let's get a couple of skipping 
shakers in there as well and take it right down, pan them to the right slightly. And again, we're just working on the 16ths here. Like so. It's just adding more groove to the track. Let's just repeat that a second time. And really important, we're going to take this groove template and we're going to drop it on our drums as well. So it's got the same groove template as the rest of our track. I'll probably put it on the kicks as well, just in case we decide to do any um, kick rhythms that deviate from that 4-4. Okay, so now, what are we going to do? We are going to create a 16th shaker for when the track really kind of really gears up a notch. We need to get that 16th rhythm in there. So this could be a bit hard. Usually I would use a loop, shake a loop, but I want to show you how to program it in. Um, and the way I'm going to do that is just put a shaker on four 16ths like this. And I'm going to adjust the volume of some of them. And that's going to create the sound of someone actually using a shaker. So let's just duplicate that. But you can hear it's really kind of low, it, it's really low in the groove or it's really kind of delayed in the groove. So I'm going to tweak the start point of that particular sample forward because you can see there's quite a long attack over that. Now the way to make this sit even more in the groove is going to be to put a sidechain compressor on it. And what we're going to do for that is just grab a normal compressor, put it just after that one uh, shaker. This is really important. Now when I open this up, let's call this SC pump, because it's going to give that sidechain pumping effect. I'm going to choose the input from sidechain. And here I've got my sidechain trigger track, which is just a very short, sharp tick that you can never hear because in, in the routing, I've got it set to sends only, not master phone. Um, so we have got that set there. And we are just going to use that as an input to trigger the drums. Uh, input sidechain. There's a tip for you. Turn your phone off when you're producing. Does my head in. My mistake though, I should have turned it off. So if we solo this, uh, let's solo. This is where we were. And it's just allowing that to kind of groove and pump slightly underneath the rest of the track. Now I'm going to use a premium plugin here. I say premium, it's free. You can download it below as well. It is the, uh, Ozone Imager 2 from Isotope, completely free, so you can grab it. I'll put the link below. And we're going to spread out the stereo width of this shaker. There we go. Width, stereo eyes. And now you can hear it's really wide in the mix. And that's just going to add some movement to the track, some space. Okay, that's pretty cool. I'm happy with that at the moment. Next thing I'm going to do is create a... I'm going to create a vocal next. No, I'm going to create an organ stab next. Let's create the organ stab that's in this track. Now, the easiest way to do this is to use an organ sound because there's a bit of grit to it as already if it's a sample rather than a, um, a synth. So that's what we're going to do. We are going to just load up a normal simpler and then find some kind of organ sound. Goodness knows where I'm going to find it. Keys and organs. Uh, no, they're chords. We don't want that. Um, yeah, we'll use a Rhodes um, sample. I don't want this beginning weird kind of pumpiness, so I'm going to just bring that forward, the sample start point. And you can hear there's movement and interest in that sound already because it's a sample. 
Uh, and now we're going to program it in. So let's just create a MIDI track. Let's call it organ. Color it blue. I'm not sure if blue is the natural color of organs. I could say something inappropriate here, so I'm not going to. You just have to use your imagination. Today we're going with blue, okay? Um, and then we are going to work out what notes it would be. I think this track is in F sharp minor. So you could use the scale feature in Ableton Live 11. Uh, let's do that actually, just for something interesting, uh, a bit different. F minor. And then if we, let's get these out of the way, the velocity, press scale. This is only going to be showing the notes from within that scale now. So you can see, you can program this in, or you could play it in how I am, but you can see you can use this template to, to program it in if you want. But let's stick to playing it today. I don't need, know if these are the right notes, but they're close enough. That'll do. And let's go back there. So we've got what we programmed in, consolidate. And then I want these to be synchronized as well. So I'm just going to do another quantize. And let's get the volumes roughly the same as well. Doesn't matter if they're slightly off, because again, it just adds movement and character to the track. Like so. And then let's work on this organ a little bit. I might stop it there. Yeah. Working with the length of your notes is almost as important as working with when you trigger them, because you don't want notes unnecessarily bleeding over other notes, and it really adds to the groove depending on when you end those notes. So that's what we're going to do with the organ. It already sounds pretty much there. I'm just going to add a little bit of saturation to warm it up a bit. So let's get this preset. Add some drive. Attenuate the output slightly. Nice. And then I'm going to add a filter as well, just to keep it low. I might try the filter before the saturator and after. I quite like it after, because it's rolling off the high end of the sample, and then it's adding the saturation after, so you're still getting some of that high end energy in there. And Let's add some reverb, just a little bit. And now what we're going to do is create a vocal. This is going to be a bit weird because you're going to hear me sing badly, but I know that you're game. If you're game, let's do it. Uh, what shall I sing? What does the tune go? Okay, this is what I want to do. Make it. No. Let's try again. Make a track like you. That's what I'm going to use, okay? And I'm going to process it to get it sounding a bit more like Zhu's vocals. It helps if you can sing well. But we can't. We, we simply don't have that possibility today, guys. So you're going to have to deal with this. Make it. Let's turn it down. Turn off warp. I don't think we need warp. We just need to make sure it's triggered at the right point. Make. So I'm going to pull forward the start point. Make a track. Make a track like you. Don't worry. You won't be hearing it sound like that for much longer. Let's completely screw this up. So the first thing I'm going to do is take out the low end with an EQ. Make a track like you. 
make a track like you. Now we're going to add some compression and really just get it a bit more uh, locked in, sounding good. Make a track like you. Make a track like you. Okay, now this is the bit where we're gonna really give it that style, that flavor that Zhu's vocals tend to have. I would do this in Ableton if I knew how. I mean, you can change the format here within the clip, but there's a tool that's not free, um, but it is very good for working with vocals, especially if you want to do formant shifts, and that is the Little Alter Boy by Sound Toys. I hope it's by Sound Toys, otherwise I'd be a bit embarrassed. Yeah, it is by Sound Toys. Um, so we're going to shift the formant here and keep the pitch the same. In fact, I might take the pitch down. Now that's more like that faded track he did. Yeah, something like that. Weird. Um, I might do that before the EQ and before the compression. Yeah, like that's how you create that weird kind of sounding vocal with something like the Little Alter Boy. Um, but let's add some stereo width to this. So we could use reverb on the auxiliary channel, gives us more control. Yep. So we've got a whole reverb on the second channel and what we're going to do to kind of get this all gelling in a bit better is let's just turn off the monitoring there we don't need that anymore uh, what I'm going to do is add some side chain compression to some of these elements so I, I have to check to see how this actually sounds against the original but from where I'm sitting it's kind of sounding there I'll do a bit more work on this before I give it to you to download anyway um, which you can do below this video don't forget but I'm just going to copy the sidechain compressor here from my drums, put it on the bass, but just dial back the effect a bit. Let's get the kick and the bass together. So just a little bit to help it bounce. Maybe just to gel it together a bit on the drippy, drippy riff and the organ. Thing is, the sidechain pump can sometimes add some tick to the signal. So I think I'm actually going to put this before the envelope, uh, before the filter today. And that high end tick's gone because it's being filtered out by the filter. Now you, that's an example of when I would specifically choose to deviate from my normal signal flow because there's a specific reason for doing that. Okay, let's add a little bit on the vocal. We are also going to add a little bit of high end. In fact, I'm going to do it after the compressor though because I don't want that high end being compressed anymore. I'm also going to add a sidechain compressor to the uh, room reverb, sorry, to the hall reverb. So you can hear it's all just bouncing and pumping slightly and let's hear it all together. Now, last thing I'm going to do on this vocal, uh, before I just delete it, is uh, I'm going to add some stereo width. So, a couple of tools you can use here, a couple of free tools. Again, you've got the Ozone Imager, which you can use, or you've got the Vocal Doubler, also by Ozone, which I'll link to below. So I'm going to use this and just add some stereo width to this vocal. So what I'm doing is just, it's layering up and delaying the vocal, the single vocal slightly, panning it left and right, and that's just adding some more stereo width. So this is when it's off. In fact, I'll turn the reverb off because it's gonna confuse us because that adds stereo width anyway. Here we go. With vocal doubler. Okay, with the reverb, with everything, let's do it. <laughs> that 
that vocal though. Oh my goodness. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this guys. I'm going to do some more work on it. Maybe a little bit of arrangements as well, then you can download it. I'll reference it against the original track, make sure it's sounding a bit more like it. I'm doing this just with fresh ears, so it's a bit hard to tell, but it sounds pretty close to me. So yeah, don't forget you can download this. If you want coaching from me, check the link below. We helped our students get signed to some of the world's biggest dance labels, get played on stations like Radio 1 by giving weekly feedback one-on-one -on -one calls where we can dig into the door together loads of good stuff so do check out the, the link below for details and don't forget to download this project file all the samples completely free once again thank you so much for joining if you enjoyed it for enjoy it if thank you so much for watching that's what i meant to say if you enjoyed it please like this video share it with your friends and subscribe to my channel and until next time thanks for watching cheers and happy producing